Hey, what's up everyone? This is Matthew Marconi with Liberty Multimedia. In this video, we're going over 10 simple habits that you can use to end procrastination and get things done. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. Simple habit number one, I am proactive, do it now. So this one comes from self-development author and motivational speaker, Brian Tracy. So what Tracy points out is that a lot of people are procrastinating simply because of the fact that they identify themselves as procrastinators. Like it's something that they were born with and didn't have any control over. When in reality, procrastination is a choice. When you think of yourself as a procrastinator, it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in your reality. So what Tracy suggests is to take as little as five minutes at the start of each day to say to yourself out loud, I am proactive, do it now. Imagine yourself getting done the task that you've been procrastinating on, the joy and good feelings that it would bring, and then go from there. Now, I promise you, from someone that's done this from experience, it's going to feel a little bit weird at first, almost like you're lying to yourself, especially if you've been procrastinating for years and decades. But it's an extremely powerful technique, and there's a reason that it's first on the list. Don't underestimate its power. Simple habit number two. Write down a list of everything you've been procrastinating, break it down into smaller tasks, and set deadlines to complete them. Now, this might sound like common sense, but it's really amazing how it's not a common practice among millions and millions of people that are struggling with procrastination. So what happens is the more time we allocate to a particular project, the more time it takes to get done. And in the worst case, when we don't have a deadline at all, the less likely chance that it's actually going to get finished. You know, I used to frequently fall victim to this train of thought. You know, I'd say things like, oh, I'd love to start a successful business one day, or I've always wanted to travel to Thailand. Well, that might sound like an actual goal on paper. Without actionable steps and a definitive deadline for doing it, it's really more like a wish than a goal. Today, my entire world and business revolves around deadlines, and it's always a priority to be shortening them however possible, whether it's through shortening deadlines, greater efficiency, delegation, or even by lowering my standard. That last point actually comes from Voltaire, a uh, quote in 1770, where he said, the perfect is the enemy of the good. And more recently, I guess, the guys from South Park actually had a really great documentary out called Six Days to Air. And in it, Trey Parker was talking about why they do an entire episode of South Park in six days. Because he said something along the lines of, look, I often feel like once I have this finished, oh man, this could have been way better. You know, I could have, you know, spent weeks and weeks tweaking this and that. But at the end of the day, it would have only been 5% better. You know, there was one episode he was talking about, Make Love Not Warcraft, where he was so embarrassed by the end result and putting it out there that he just, he didn't even want to see it. He was so, so ashamed of what it was going to do to the entire franchise. And then it ended up winning a Primetime Emmy Award. So don't let some sort of impossible standard of perfection prevent you from getting things done. Simple habit number three, create a starting ritual and do less than you're capable of in the beginning. You know, it's really common when we're tackling a new project to want to get at it right away, to be like, oh, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to spend a full 12 hours doing this and we come in all fully motivated and then we end up burning ourselves out and then not continuing. Or even worse, or more commonly, I should say, Anyone that's been procrastinating for a long time knows that often a lot of the battle is in getting started. You know, we'll look at a, a goal, say, that we outline and break down in our last simple habit, like, for instance, lose 10 pounds in 30 days. We'll look at that and go, oh man, that means I gotta, I have to get up early, I have to go to the gym, I have to, you know, pack my bags, I gotta do, I gotta run on the elliptical, I gotta do, um, you know, strength training, weightlifting, I'm going to have all this extra laundry, I'm going to have to change my diet, maybe my sleeping patterns, you know, and then we get so overwhelmed that we don't even bother starting to begin with, even though we know that it's something that's going to benefit our lives. So a common tactic is to get started by breaking down whatever the goal is into the smallest task imaginable. For instance, with the gym, it would be pack your bags and get to the gym or walk for five minutes a day. Something really, really small that, that doesn't overwhelm you, but it's enough to get the ball rolling. It's far more important to build that consistency than it is to work hard, especially in the beginning. So create a starting ritual. One of my favorites, uh, and another one I came across in my research was, set a timer for five minutes, five to 15 minutes in order to get started on your particular task. Like anyone can do something for five to 15 minutes, right? 
And that sort of eliminates a lot of the performance anxiety that comes with the gigantic task, to, task ahead. So break it down into the smallest action conceivable and have a starting ritual. My recommendation is to use a timer on your phone, set it for 15 minutes and get going. Simple habit number four, plan each day in advance, limit to-do list to six items. Okay, so this is something I used to do all the time, even when I was still procrastinating. I was a big fan of the to-do list, right? Sometimes I'd have as many as 25, 30 things on that list. You know, everything from, you know, cleaning my room to, uh, you know, uh, exercising for two hours, making 10 sales calls. Uh, there's no shortage of things that I could have on that list because you can always come up with things to do, right? And what would happen is, say I've got 25 things on that list, I'd cross out like 20 of those things and I feel good about myself for being productive. But it took me years and years to figure out that I wasn't being productive at all because I'd look at those last five things on my list and they were almost always the most important. So when you have too many things on your to-do list, rather than doing the most important, it becomes a game of how can I cross off as many things off this list as, as possible. So limit your to-do list to six items and, and go from there because you don't have to have more than, it doesn't even have to be more than one or two. It just has to be something that's high impact. I can remember there was a span when I was a reporter and uh, I had this, this task on my list, transcribe arson investigation. It was a huge story. It was gonna create a lot of waves in the community and that bitch was on my to-do list for no joke, three, four months at a time before I decided to just get rid of it completely, all because of the anxiety that was coming of what would, what would happen of releasing that story. So instead of having a lengthy to-do list, shorten it to a few concise action items. That brings us into simple habit number five, do the hardest thing first. This is so important and I can't emphasize it enough and it goes back to what I was talking about in the last habit, but Focus on the hardest thing first. That one comes from uh, Brian Tracy, again, in his best-selling time management book, Eat That Frog. So he uses the metaphor of the frog as, okay, let's say you have to eat a whole bunch of live frogs, uh, which, he, which is what he calls a, a daunting project or a task. It doesn't do you any good to stare at the biggest, ugliest frog. If you get that out of the way first, it creates a momentum effect where everything else becomes easier. And it's the craziest thing because I wish I would have learned this 10 years ago because when you start with the hardest thing first and get that done, that gets rid of all the performance anxiety on doing the rest. Everything else is easier and you can even get started on that hardest task first by using the, the technique of starting from 15 minutes. And it's incredible that just by changing the order of things that you choose to do, uh, you can you can more than double your productivity without without really doing any more. You're just changing the order. It's a, it's a really really powerful habit. Get it working for you. Simple habit number six: time block tasks and eliminate distractions. So time blocking. Think of it as you're you're scheduling your to do list against your calendar. So if you have um, something that you want to get done, a big project that you want to get done by Friday. You can either pull an all-nighter on Thursday, which was my technique for no bullshit 20 years in a row, or you can block out time Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or a few days of that week in order to get it done and then tackle them one at a time in a distraction-free work environment. So the research on multitasking is pretty clear if you aren't aware. Um, while people think that they're more productive when they're doing many things at once, they actually get quite a lot more done when they're focusing on a single task, whether it's big or small. So uh, to, to get started on that, again, we're gonna identify what the tasks are that we wanna do and go at them in a distraction-free work environment. And there's a few tips on how to do that. Um, number one, when you are working on one of your important tasks, don't forget or, or don't be afraid to set your, fo uh, your phone to airplane mode or do not disturb. Um, because, you know, in the age of the internet with social media notifications, phone calls, text messages, um, unscheduled, you know, calls and meetings, and you, everyone knows the millions of distractions that are out there, it can be so hard to focus. And it's not rude to, to turn off your phone for a period of time. In fact, it's an essential productivity tool. Um, so when you are do, working on something very important, put your phone on do not disturb or, or airplane mode. 
Another one is uh, work alone whenever you can. I mean, you don't need more than a desk in a room or a chair in order to get things done. And it's crazy. If you look at some of the most successful people in their work environments, they're not as elaborate as you might think. You just need something really, really simple in order uh, and distraction free in order to, to get things done. Also, write down distractions while you're developing your, your projects so you know where your distractions are coming from and then you can develop strategies to eliminate them. Last one and really important, this comes from Tim Ferriss, the author of The 4-Hour Workweek. Don't check your phone or your email for the first hour of the day. Now this is really important because it trains us to be proactive rather than reactive. It allows us to set our priorities for the day figure out what's important before we get into the mode of reacting over for other people's demands over our time. So don't check your phone and your messages until you have a clear plan of what you want to get done on that day. Simple habit number seven. When you do procrastinate, forgive yourself. Now, this one is another one that I struggled with for years and years because it's, it's a common tendency that, you know, when we say we're going to do something or didn't, or didn't end up doing it, or, you know, we wanted to get a really important project done, but instead just hung out and watched Netflix and YouTube all day. It's really, really easy to go, ah, oh, damn, I suck. I'm a procrastinator. What's the point? Why do I even try? But recognize that, you know, success and, and ending procrastination, becoming proactive, it never follows a straight line. There's going to be failures along the way. And recognize that these are just a blip in the road and, and, and not something that, that consumes your life. It happens to everybody. Uh, don't be afraid to fail. Uh, the, the real fear is in not, not trying at all. Simple habit number eight, make yourself socially accountable. Now this one's a little bit controversial. Some people will say don't tell your goals to, uh, to anyone else, that you should be keeping them to yourself. I like to tell people what I'm aiming to accomplish, even if it sounds lofty or unachievable, especially to people that I, that I care about and that I respect because it adds another level of accountability uh, to, to, to not want to let somebody down. So when, and it's also pretty noted that people tend to work harder and be more proactive when somebody's holding their feet to their fire. So there's a bunch of different ways to doing this. You can, you can hire an accountability coach on say stick.me, or sorry, I think it's stick.com or coach.me, which I'll link in the, in the description. Um, but I found more than enough uh, results in telling, telling what I'm looking to accomplish to people that I respect, ask them to follow up with me throughout the process and, uh, and see how things are going. Um, you wanna create a social consequence in the event that you fail. So Tim Ferriss takes a step further. He'll, he recommends in his book, The 4-Hour Workweek, writing out a check to an organization that you would never, ever want to support. Give it to a friend and tell them that if you don't get your task done by that particular date, that they mail it. So it gives you extra motivation uh, to, to get this thing done because you don't want that on your record. And there's a psychological factor at play, too, that, that people tend to work harder when they're attempting to counteract loss or, or shame. So tell someone what you're looking to accomplish, what your deadline is, and create a social consequence in the event that you fail. Simple habit number nine. Imagine what your life would look like should you continue procrastinating indefinitely. So it's true that procrastination is a choice, that it's really, really easy to blow off any of the things on our to-do list, and it might seem inconsequential at first, um, there's no one holding a gun to your head saying that you need to be proactive unless you decide to get like really, really crazy with the uh, simple habit number eight there. Uh, don't, don't do that. Um, it might actually work though. But when you're trying to run towards something you want, it's really, really useful to be running away from something you don't want. Professor of clinical psychology, Jordan Peterson calls this, imagine your own version of hell. Imagine under a worst case scenario what your life is going to look like should you procrastinate indefinitely. It could be that you know you end up stuck at a dead end job that you hate for 40, 50 years, never getting to retire or being laid off and having nothing, never being able to start a family. Whatever it is, imagine your worst case scenario, um, what, what your life is going to look like. And what that's going to do is it's going to have the effect of putting your fears behind you and driving you forward. It's kind of like an extreme version of, uh, of the last simple habit, but it's an incredibly useful tool. Okay, and the final simple habit is develop a vision for what you want out of your life. 
Now this could take its own video to, uh, to explain in depth, but when we're running away from something that we don't want, it really, really helps to have a vision of what we do want. And this takes a lot of time and introspection, um, and you should approach it as if you couldn't fail. What would your ideal life look like? And I know a lot of this sort of introspection and thought is being replaced by, in, especially in the modern age, by, you know, short-term pleasures and, and escapism. But it's, it's extremely important to have a purpose in order to combat depression and give your life meaning. We only have so much time left in this world and who wants to live a mediocre life? What you're gonna wanna do is write this vision down into a simple paragraph and read it out loud twice per day or at least once per day so that you're building that consistency and, and having a clear and clearer vision over time what it is that you want and how you can work towards it. So that's it, 10 simple habits that you can use to crush procrastination and get things done. If you found value out of this video, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna know more about these 10 simple habits in depth, I publish them into an ebook, which is also linked in the description below. 10 simple habits to crush procrastination, get things done, and double your income. Procrastination really is a monster that's, that's limiting so many people from their potential. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel because it doesn't have to be that hard. It's just a matter of developing the right habits and building that consistency over time. Until next time, thank you for watching.